In this video, we'll begin to talk about some of the terms that are used in equity and inclusion work. It's good to have a shared definition of these words so that when we're in conversation with one another, we know where we're coming from and what understandings we're working with. Colonialism is an ongoing process. It informs us and affects us at all times. Settlers, even when we're fighting against colonialism, still benefit from colonial structures they fight against. Saying that settlers benefit from colonialism is not a moral judgment on individuals today, but rather a radical recognition that the impact of colonialism on settler indigenous relationships and our relationship to the land itself has been forever changed. Decolonization is a term that is being used more and more to describe two things. The first is connected directly to land and the process of establishing indigenous land sovereignty including returning land to those it was taken from. Decolonization is also used to describe the process of undoing the negative impact that colonialism has had on our minds, bodies, and institutions. This involves examining the roots of our assumptions and learning or remembering different ways of being that don't perpetuate systems of dominance. White supremacy is based on the assertion that the white race is superior and that ways of being born out of white dominance should be the accepted norm. It can make white people feel self-satisfied and overconfident in their particular value system, imposing it on others with little or no consideration of other histories or contexts. Because it's so omnipresent, resulting from colonial processes, and imposes an unseen value system, a person doesn't have to be white or overtly racist to be caught up within it. White supremacist characteristics are the underpinning assumptions that lay at the foundation of all of our colonial institutions, including education, health, politics, economics, and more institutions. White supremacist ideals seep into all of us, affecting our actions and interactions. It impacts all of us by limiting the options of how we live in the world. The first step to overcoming white supremacy is to acknowledge its presence and be mindful of how and where it is showing up in our work. A simple example of this that we might not think of very often is how cars have been designed using car crash test dummies based on the average male. This means that the safety and design of cars prioritizes masculine builds and that women are 47% more likely to be seriously injured if involved in a car crash. The overall point is that societal conceptions of what's average can be intrinsically patriarchal, which creates unequal outcomes. We sometimes hear men argue against this by citing specific examples of times when they haven't been favored by a system. They might talk about their lived reality of not being a high income earner or having a negative experience with the healthcare system. We are not denying that these experiences exist. Sometimes these unique examples can put on display how multiple systems operate at once. In this example, we might also examine classism or ableism interacting with patriarchy. Men might also want to talk about the way that patriarchy harms men too by limiting their safety around emotional expression. This is another complexity that we can hold simultaneously, that it is true that patriarchy hurts men and these systems have an even harsher and more pervasive impact on non-males.